Mrs. Tompkins from Bonneview. I teach a fourth, fifth grade combination class, and today I'm actually going to read to you the first chapter of this book called Ban This Book by Alan Gratz. Chapter 1, The Mystery of the Missing Book. It all started the day my favorite book went missing from the library. I didn't know it was missing, not yet. In my mind, it was still sitting there all alone on the shelf like a kid in the cafeteria waiting for her one and only friend to come and find her, waiting for me to find her. All I wanted to do was run to the library and check out my favorite book before homeroom, but Rebecca, my one and only real life friend, was still talking and trademarking our names. Have you ever thought about registering amyannollinger.com? Rebecca asked me. No, Rebecca, I have never thought about registering amyannollinger.com. I'm nine years old. Why in the world would I bother to register a website with my name on it when my parents won't even let me use Facebook yet? That's what I thought I was saying. When I said instead was no. You should, Rebecca told me. You've got a unique name, but even so, somebody could register it, and then what would you do? RebeccaZimmerman.com is already gone. I'm 10 years old and already my future intellectual property is being snapped up. Jay-Z and Beyonce trademarked their baby's names in less than a month after she was born. You'd think my parents would have known enough to do the same. Rebecca's parents were both lawyers and she wanted to be one too when she grew up. I couldn't imagine a more boring job. Instead I said, yeah. I was still itching to get to the library and check out my favorite book. I opened my locker to stuff my backpack inside and gave my mailbox a quick look. Nobody knows how it got started, but everybody at Shelbourne Elementary has these cardboard boxes taped to the inside door of their lockers just below the little vents they put out there in case you get stuffed into your locker by a bully. If you want to leave a note for somebody, you just slip the piece of paper in the slot and it falls right in the little cardboard box. It's such a tradition that Mr. Crutchfield, the custodian, just leaves the boxes in the lockers from year to year. As usual, my mailbox was empty, which I'd expected. My one and only friend doesn't believe in writing notes. Never leave a paper trail, Rebecca says. More advice from lawyers' parents. Did you hear about Morgan Freeman, the actor, Rebecca asked? Somebody who wasn't named Morgan Freeman registered his name at morganfreeman.com and he had to sue them to get it back. Now that's an interesting case. I can't imagine anything less interesting. Rebecca, I don't care anything about trademarks or registering domain names. I have to check out my favorite book before somebody else does. That's what I wanted to tell her. Instead, I held up a handful of books like a shield and said, I have to return these books to the library before class and backed away before she could tell me more about the court case. I'll see you in homeroom, I called. Normally, I would already have my favorite book checked out and in my backpack, but our librarian, Mrs. Jones, has a rule that you can only renew a book two times in a row and then it has to sit on the shelf for five whole days before you can check it out again. She says it's to make sure other people get a chance to read it. But I think she made that rule up just to make me read other books, which I would have done anyway. I dumped last night's books in the book return and waved good morning to Miss Jones on the way to the fiction shelves. Amy Ann, Mrs. Jones called. Honey, wait. Just let me grab my book, I called back. I turned into the H through N shelves and hurried to where I knew my favorite book would be waiting for me. Only it wasn't there. I looked again. It still wasn't there. I looked behind the books in case it had gotten pushed back and was hidden behind the others, like they sometimes do. But no, it really wasn't there. But my favorite book was always on the shelf. Could somebody else really have checked it out? I was about to go and ask Mrs. Jones when she turned down the row. Mrs. Jones is a big white lady with short brown hair and rhinestone grainy glasses that hang around her neck on a chain when she isn't reading. Today she was wearing a red dress with white polka dots. Polka dots are her thing. Where's my book, I asked her. That's what I was trying to tell you, honey, Mrs. Jones said. I knew you'd come in for it first thing. It's been five days, I told her. I marked it down on my calendar. I get to check it out again after five days. You said so. Did somebody, did somebody else check it out? No, Amy Ann, I had to take it off the shelf. 
I frowned. Take it off the shelf? What did she mean, take it off the shelf? Why? Mrs. Jones sighed and wrung her hands. She looked like she was about to tell, my dog, tell me my dogs had died because some parents got together and said they didn't think it was appropriate for elementary school and the school board agreed with them. Wasn't appropriate? What does that mean? It means I can't check it out to you, honey, or to anybody else. Not until I talk to the school board and get this nonsense overturned. It means, Amy Ann, that your favorite book was banned from the school library. To find out what book was banned, you're going to have to read on.